everyone. Jeremy Knopf here with Spartan Media. And today I've got Howard Shore, who's a uh, friend of mine from Board of Advisors. Very smart guy, consultant who's helped a lot of companies do some really amazing things. And we want to talk about a book that he's rolling out here pretty soon. It's launching in what, just a few days now, right, Howard? It is on uh, next Tuesday, August 4th. Awesome. Now, I, I think this is a really valuable book. Um, Howard shared some information with me, kind of helped me through some, some issues that I was working on in my own business. And he's got a lot of insight as to how to fix certain problems. So I wanted to take a minute to interview him, talk a little bit about this book. And, uh, you know, for those of you who may be stuck in certain aspects of your business, maybe this is something that can be useful for you. So wanted to talk a little bit about that. Howard, um, before we get too much into the book, let's talk a little bit about you kind of like how you got started doing what you're doing and you know what kind of things you do for businesses let's start there you know so you know everything started um actually back when i was young um and and one of the things i will say is is i believe that every person i meet has has the ability to achieve a lot more potential than they have and, and my passion is to unlock that and where that came from was from an early age uh my uh i had dyslexia sleep apnea uh, ADHD, Coke bottle glasses. I mean, it was uh, the gamut. They <laughs> wanted to put me in a special ed when I was in going into kindergarten. And luckily I had an advocate like my mom who could see the potential in me, see beyond these little idiosyncrasies of things that could be overcome, but the, the system was judging me uh, based on the cover. Uh, long story short, thanks to my mom, I didn't go into special ed because had that happened, you know, God knows what path I would be on right now. I don't think I would be where I am today. She challenged me all the way throughout my life. I was, you know, at best a high C student all the way through high school because of those issues I talked about. Um, and she always challenged me to be more. She always helped me see what I was capable of. And and thanks to her, I mean, I graduated with two college degrees. I have, um, I owned my first business when I was 18. I sold it when I was 21. I've worked and, and I've been in the C-suite of uh, in, the, in the boardroom in three Fortune 500 companies, up to 20 billion in revenue. Uh, and what's interesting about that story is you'd be like, oh, he's beating his chest or whatever. <laughs> um, it's really, it, it was really a journey of, man, life could be so much better if, only if I could become a better leader. The only reason I was successful is I worked three times harder than everybody else. And, you know, when I look back, I was like a miserable, I was a horrible leader. I mean, I, I, I can remember my first business having, you know, somebody cry in my office and I'm like, you know, and it was all because of how I delivered something. I wasn't necessarily <laughs> wrong, but, you know, I didn't get the whole human element back there when I was, you know, 18 sure. years old. And so through this whole journey, I knew there was a better way. I, I, I had looked at, uh, and I worked in some really prominent companies for some very uh, on paper successful people, um, but I didn't want to emulate hardly any of them. And actually, when I sat back after about 20 years of you know being an executive in companies, I couldn't even fill my hand with people that I wanted to emulate. And then I also looked around me and saw a lot of people. I mean, I worked in companies that had 50,000 employees, and a lot of those people were disengaged, just not excited about going to work. Hmm. So this got me interested in, well, how do we do this in a better way? How do we make it so we can unlock all those people? And, and it caused me to study, which is what, what led to the book, which led to the methodology that we use. But, but something everybody else should know about even this book is it's a culmination. I've created over a billion dollars worth of value over my career. And, um, and what this book does is it helps capture what I learned along the way, many times in hindsight, of what I could have done better what I could have done right, what I saw other people doing right. And I wanted to short circuit that for, uh, for, for people that read the book. Awesome. Awesome. You know, and it's interesting you, you mentioned that because when we were first introduced, and I, I don't recall if we met at that last board of advisors meeting, but when we were introduced, there was a particular problem that kind of lines up with what you're talking about, that uh, my good friend, Cheryl Snap Connor thought that you would be a good person to solve that. And, you know, we had that conversation and you identified some things and it was kind of like, oh, well, no shit. Like, uh, yeah, this is, this is how you solve that problem. Um, and, but this is something you've done. It's not just a, like we see a lot of people that it's, they've done this great thing and it was their one and only win, right? This is something you've done consistently over time in a number of organizations, right? 
Well, that's correct. And, and, and I want to caveat a few things. My success is not necessarily what I did. It's how I helped unlock others. And Cheryl's a sure. great example. You got referred by Cheryl because when she and I first met, um, she had some things she was dealing with. I gave her some advice. It turned to be, you know, in basically an hour, two hour phone call like yours, mm -hmm. worth a lot of growth for her company, a lot of re relief for her as a leader. Um, but the success there wasn't my advice to her, uh, particularly, it was her openness and my ability to kind of share those things and then challenge her to implement it. That was why that led to, you know, an introduction to you. Right. Awesome. Now, you are being a little more humble than you should be, because while you're saying that it's not something that you did, I mean, it, it is, in fact, like there's, you played a key role there in, in what happened. So, I mean, if we're going to be completely honest, it is, it is directly resulting uh, from an action that you took, uh, you know, your knowledge and, and experience brought into the picture. So, um, but let's talk about, uh, you know, why this book and more specifically, why now? I mean, we all talk about, we've all probably heard, you know, everyone says that everyone has a book in them. So why is this, why is this one the one for you? And what makes now the time for this book? Well, first of all, I love recessions. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and what I mean by that is any idiot could have grown a business over the last 10 to 15 years. Sure. It, it didn't take rocket science when the entire tide is rising in every industry for somebody to figure out how to eke out a little bit of money. But there were a lot of weak business owners at that time, and they're still weak. And even the stronger ones were missing a lot of things. But because things were so well, their mind was closed. But the, the main reason I love recessions, other than it opens up people's mind, is more than 50% of the S&P 500 were created and really had their, their, their go at it during recessions. Okay. This is where, where they really helped stand themselves out. And so, so now the question is, is how do you do that? And so this book has every single chapter, most of the chapters are, are, are four to six pages, and they are chunk full of and if you just go and do what we recommended in there, and there's, there's stories of the companies that did it and very specific action steps, this is a million dollar book easily for anybody who reads it. We've never met, and I've never met a company where we can't bring a million to $2 million from the bottom line, even tiny ones. And it's by applying the things in this book. Now, when you say even tiny ones, that's a subjective term. So, you know, is a small mom and pop company going to get the same kind of value out of this, obviously on a different scale, as a large, say, Fortune 500 company. So they could, but this okay. gets to mindset. And you know, take right now, uh, during this crisis, hmm. this is the time to be ambitious. This is the time to be creative. This is the time to have initiative. Right. If you're ambitious, it doesn't matter your mom and pop today. Many of our clients were mom and pop and we turned them into or helped them turn into real big companies. So, uh, so, so yes, it is relative. So this is good. If you're a startup, it tells you what to do. And if you're, you know, in that million dollar up, I've gone into million dollar companies and we've showed them quickly you know, this is why you're not a $2 million or $5 million company, and they start implementing that, and then they're on their way. Okay. What would you say if you had to pick three quick tips for somebody right now with the, with the economic situation we've got right now, and then what everybody else says is going to be a coming recession? What are some quick tips that you think somebody might be able to implement that you're kind of outlined within this book? So we were already in the recession. <laughs> I mean, we're already there. And it was coming regardless of COVID. It was sure. just a matter of when is that coming. And, and these cycles happen. The things in this book shouldn't matter what cycle you're in. The other okay. thing that I want everybody to take away is if you truly had a vision and you, you truly had a mark you're trying to make in the world, that has not changed because of a recession. That has not changed because of a COVID. What has changed maybe is how you get there, how you move about. And, and a lot of that has to do with strategies, all right? And so and, and what I really mean by that, so, so people understand, is my mission in life is I want to impact 500,000 lives. I want to do what it takes to have that impact. So 
where I didn't do a lot of things virtually before, I'm doing a lot now. So the impact continues. Where I used to speak on stage before, I'm speaking you know, on, on webinars and, and that kind of stuff. My, my goal has not changed. How I get there will change. But one of the challenges I would put out to everybody right now, why their businesses were mediocre before and maybe less than mediocre now, uh, depending on what's going on, is too many companies are not realizing that their job is not to compete to be the best. Their job is to compete to be different. Every business yes. owner needs to compete on different dimensions than their competition. There's more supply than there is demand now, and there was more supply than there was demand before all of this in, in almost every single uh, industry, in every single segment. So right. your job as a leader is to figure out what is that and difference that your business is going to make in the world. And if you don't figure that out, it's going to take two to three times the work for you to grow your business than somebody else who takes the time up front to figure it out. This book gives you some of the guidance on how to do that. So let's break that down a little bit for a second here, Howard. When you say your job is to be different instead of being the best, um, I think a lot of people don't understand that because I've had the same kind of conversation with, with my clients and they don't seem to get it. And, you know, all they want to do is say, oh, well, hey, we're like 5% better than our competitor at this. Well, that doesn't mean shit, right? Like you have to, you have to really be different. So let's talk a little bit about that. So, I mean, then you're going to want to pick some common companies because if I name some of the companies we've worked with, uh, they may not be as renowned as, say, a Southwest Airlines or, a, uh, or you take Uber. So, mm -hmm. you know, when Uber came into the market, we, we all used to use taxis grudgingly and sure. would actually almost avoid it. And what they did was, is they figured out how to provide us with transportation without owning any cars, using technology and maxing people that actually needed extra work, that had cars, that were, had the time, and they married them with people that actually need to be delivered somewhere else and they changed the experience. Um, Airbnb. Uh, was renting, last I checked, more rooms than Hilton, yes. all right? Again, they don't own a room anywhere. So, you know, these are some extreme ex examples. But if, let's examples. take Southwest Let's take Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. You know, Southwest Airlines has been the most consistently profitable company and one of the most profitable, if and probably the most profitable company since its inception in 1970. Uh, actually, they've only had one quarter um, prior to now that, that they were ever not profitable. And the reason was, is how they delivered business. They went after a very specific segment of the market that really wasn't the business tra tra um, traveler. They changed the experience and they addressed a different why. And because of that, uh, it, it's been a, a really enduring business. And if you, if you want to even take it further, they only fly to 101 airports. And uh, oh, wow. their market capitalization is like the size of Delta's, which goes all over the world. Much easier business model, uh, much fewer destinations, and, uh, and, and highly profitable. I love it. What else is somebody going to find in your book that we haven't talked about yet, Howard? So one of the things I prided myself on, <clears throat> excuse me, was the range of what this book covered. So when you look at most books, it's either just a strategy book or it's just mm -hmm. a team leadership book, uh, but they don't put it all together for you in a way that's practical. Okay. And you know, our mantra in life and the reason we exist is to create ease, speed, and confidence in leaders so they can untap that, that unlock that untapped potential. And so if you go back to the book, we realized that there were really five pillars for that to happen. If you only mastered one of them, you were not going to be anywhere near your potential. And when we look at a time, particularly mid-market and below, and, and so I'm talking $500 million and below, I've never met a business that mastered all five elements of the book, which is stewardship, strategy, planning, accountability, and human capital management. And so the, the ability to unlock potential was to figure out, and they're going to need to figure out as they read this book, 
which of the five pillars is holding you back the most. And so the, the way I set up the book was you can, you can just work on one pillar, work each chapter, and work on what you need to work on now. And I connect all the dots so that you can be, build a, a powerhouse, build a giant. Okay, so in addition to the strategies and tactics, this is actually basically a workbook where it's gonna give them a step-by-step -step action plan for what they need to do to implement the information that's in there. This is gonna tie it all together for them so that they Love cover it. all the main things of running on a business and, and the steps that you can take to become in each one of those five pillars. Love it. Um, do you, let's see, you've already touched on what those five pillars are. Um, is there anything else we should talk about the book before we tell them where to find it? So what's interesting is uh, a lot of times I get uh, questions from people, what is the difference between the folks that have a lot of success with what you're doing and the folks that don't. And okay. there's two things that I can say really stand out is one is humility. One of the things, you know, everybody who's ever worked with me knows is I never, ever stop learning. And I'm, I'm more interested in what other people have to say most of the time because I know what I think I know, mm -hmm. but it's by accessing all those other brains uh, I can learn what I didn't know I didn't know. And then I can reform and reshape, you know, what needs to happen. And so our typical client has that level and the typical person that's going to get the most from the book is going to have that level of humility that they aren't just going to rifle through it. I heard this, I heard this, I heard this. They're going to look at this book and they're going to say, I've heard it, but I'm not doing it. And then what these people have is they have this burning desire to be great. If you have a burning desire to be the best leader on the planet, this gives you a lot of the action steps. There's so many nuggets in there. Uh, I can assure you, you'll be a far better leader after you've read it. And then the last piece is, and I put this gauntlet out there and anybody who reads the book, and I'm, I'd love to hear back from anybody who buys it and finds out differently, no one, no one will read that book and not be able to figure out how to add a million dollars to their company. And if they have not, I want them to call me because I will show them the parts of the chapters that they can get running on to find their million bucks. That is a bold claim. And I believe that you will deliver on that. All right. So where can they find the book, Howard? I know right now right. it's on your website. It's going to be on Amazon pretty soon. Yeah. So actually, it's already on all the major websites. It's on BAM, okay. Barnes and Noble. Um, it, it's on. It's even on Walmart and Target uh, on their book sites as well. So okay. anywhere people are used to buying their books, they're going to find it right now. The only place they won't find it is Audible. I'm not going to do that. That um, the Audible for a few months. I'm letting I'm letting it get out there first. And of okay. course, you can find it now. If you go to my website and you get there before August 4th and you buy a book, you not only get that book, you get my last book, which was a bestseller. Uh, and many people are considering it's, it's a book they pull out constantly to run their businesses. You will get a free download of, of that. And I'm actually offering, and I, I, I almost um, wanted to kill my marketing firm when they came up with this idea was is I'll be willing to spend an hour with anybody who bought my book and uh, and and wants to spend time with me so I can help them unlock their potential. Really? That's uh, that's impressive. You know, I've seen authors make that kind of claim before. Actually, there was a guy, I'm not going to say his name, but uh, as far as uh, a, a, an author, he is dead to me at this point. But um, <laughs> I, I loved the information. The books were great. When they were delivered in audio format, the delivery was amazing. But in all the books, it was always, hey, you know, if you have any questions, reach out. I'm happy to answer anything. And no response. So I, I think that, I mean, that says to me, that says something about the integrity of that individual. Well, well and, and now I'll think about it. Um, you have already experienced it. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. Just call me up, ask for help. Uh, the only challenge and the reason I'm putting the, the close on the August 4th is I only have a certain amount of capacity. Of course. Um, at that point, if somebody can't get me, they will definitely get, and, and our guys have all run $400 million businesses. They've been there, done that like I have. Uh, they will get access to somebody uh, because we are on this mission. I want to help 500,000 leaders. That's awesome. Definitely want to help you spread the word as that progresses down the road. 
I'm looking forward to seeing the book, reading it, and uh, hopefully posting a review about it here pretty soon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, once we get wrapped up here, I'm going to order one off the website and then just bring that to me at the meeting since we'll see each other in a couple of days here. Um, all right, so they, they know where to find your uh, where to find the book. If somebody wants to get in touch with you about potentially talking about doing business together, how do they find you, Howard? Okay, so our Activate Group website, activategroupinc.com, just like what you see is on this side. <laughs> Got to get used to Zoom, right? Yes. Uh, they, they can go to www.activategroupinc.com. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, you know, shoot me an email. Uh, it's my last name, Shore. S H O R E H at activategroupinc.com. Uh, one thing I can assure you is every email that goes into my inbox uh, gets responded to within 24 hours. Awesome. Well, it's been a pleasure interviewing you about this book. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it, dropping a review here for you pretty soon. Um, and for everyone who's listening, everyone who sees this after the interview, I definitely encourage you guys to check it out. Howard's a smart guy. Uh, lots of wisdom. He's helped a lot of people, helped a lot of companies. So I, I'm confident that he can help you guys out as well. So um, thanks for checking this out, everyone. And we'll see you all soon. Thanks, Jeremy. My pleasure.